Right, so the fourth game. Now, I mean, there's only four games on the VOD like library, so I mean, EDG clearly win this, but it's kind of interesting as well. So we get the Lee Sing go over. Galio is available again. I really don't think they're too scared of the Galio, considering Scout knows how to just nullify it entirely. We get the Aphelios and maybe Thresh come out here. Although last time I think they went Aphelios and Zin here. And then they saved the Thresh so that they didn't reveal. Um, that kind of support pick now. I think Thresh is so good with Aphelios, so I think even if you get countered, it doesn't matter. Especially considering most of the time on Thresh, what you usually do when you're alone is you walk up, you flay them, you then hook them from the CC of your flay. Now, when you have an Aphelios, it kind of changes a little bit because you uh, you just wait for the Aphelios Graviton. Um, and then as soon as uh, Aphelios walks up, autos, you root into the Thresh queue. That means then you get the E into the alt and it just allows you to get kind of that CC that you usually get when you're kind of bush camping, but you get it um, overall. So very, very important. We do see the Ziggs come out. Now, the reason why Ziggs is pretty good, uh, Leon is good with it as well. Ziggs just needs somebody that can get in and kind of create space for him. So the reason why it's good as well is because the Aphelios is very, very long range and you can't really contest his range with anything. So it's kind of the same as what you used to do into Caitlyn when Caitlyn was heavy meta. You'd play Ziggs into Caitlyn um, and the Ziggs would be able to outrange her with his bombs and still kind of be... Very, very oppressive, especially with his minefield too. It stops him actually walking onto you. Now we are going to see an Olaf come through for the side of EDG. This is just so that, you know, they have that objective control over the Lee Sin. Um, and that's really what they're going to play for. Uh, for the side of EDG, they're looking to ban away probably the Galio here. They'll probably just get rid of it. Ziggs ult with Galio ult. It's kind of disgusting. I would like to see them ban something like Camille here as well, but I'm not sure if Naguri even plays it, but... And they could just Galio Camille on these last on this last uh, rotation, which is a very big possibility, and it's a very good comp. Now the fact that they lose tells me that I don't think they went Galio Camille because I think Galio Camille in this comp is extremely powerful. So they're just gonna look. They probably ban Rise. I really, really wouldn't give Scout Rise again. Yeah, there we go. Like, there's no way they should be giving that over. And um, so TF ban. They're also gonna probably just look to. Uh, I mean. I mean, I, I, I don't really like the TF ban here because they're blue side. If they pick TF, you just get Silas and you just hard, hard win the lane. So I, I really think the TF ban was a little bit grief, but obviously TF is a very, very strong pick. Uh, but Scout has been playing a lot better than Doinby in this series, so we shall see. Um, the cannon gets banned away again, which is really good, and especially with the, the Ziggs combo. Um, they'll probably look to... Uh, just ban away, uh, maybe Syndra, just get that away from Scout as well, I think Syndra is a really good ban here, um, Scout also plays Aurelia as well, but it's not as good, LeBlanc is also very good too, Scout's LeBlanc is scary, but I do think they just pick Syndra here, um, and then the mid pool is a little bit restricted, or they might just save counter for Scout, which is also a really, really good play here, um, and maybe just take a top laner, I mean, they love their Nah, so maybe... Yep, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Like, it's so predictable. So there we get the Nara in here. He's going to get counter matchup in mid lane. The Galio is available. What are we going to see him pick up? I'd love to see Galio Camille. I mean, GP is also amazing. Don't get me wrong. It will hard slap the Nara in lane, but... Wow, he's just completely out of it. I don't know who that is, but he's completely out of it. Like. He's really tilted, clearly. I think it's crisp. They do get the Galio again, but. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to have as much impact. They do get the GP though, so I mean, that is good because the thing is when you do take uh, Ziggs, you end up in this kind of position where your bot lane is very, very exposed. Um, well, not exposed, but your, your team comp gets exposed slightly because if you don't have enough AD elsewhere on the map, see, we do get the Silas here anyway, it was always coming. 
Like, this is why I don't get the TF ban. It makes no sense because we knew, like, I knew he was, well, I mean, I didn't know, but the chances of him taking Silas here were very, very large. It was either going to be as uh, uh, Silas or Syndra. Um, but he's just going to use the Silas and, you know, just use it to um, follow the Galliol. So I, I can see why they did it on draft in draft, to be fair. Like, I can see why they left mid to last pick, but um, there were only two kind of paths I could have gone with there. So this is the thing. So GP does provide you with enough AD on the team that it's okay to have a AP bot laner, which is the most kind of important part. So 2-1 to the side of EDG. The gold is dead even. I haven't gotten so many emails from... <laughs> Either way. So, I mean, the, in terms of jungle pathing, uh, it's just going to be kind of standard. I mean, Olaf's just going to start blue clear up. One of the reasons why you do this on Olaf is because the uh, ability haste that you actually get out of the blue buff actually allows your Q to be on a much lower cooldown, which then ends up um, allowing you to clear very, very quick. This on top of the fact that, you know, the lower HP you get on uh, Olaf, the... Um, the fast you clear is really, really important, but it's a little bit risky doing it. It's a bit rough clearing blue since uh, the changes came, since Grunt gives you that massive heal, which is counterintuitive for Olaf. It's it's not something you want. You want that before you get on the map, which means that if you're playing an Olaf and you're pathing from bl uh, kind of blue into red, it's, it's nowhere near as valuable anymore as what it once was seasons ago. So, we do see the kind of matchup playing out as it should. Uh, I mean, GP is a massive, massive lane bully. He's just very, very difficult to actually play properly. Um, in this situation, see, he's gone in Mega, but he's not really going to be able to do anything. So, um, overall, pretty good. We do see Aphelios is still out farming bot lane. And we do see a really nice hook coming from uh, Thresh. Really good play as well. Crisp does jump straight into Viper. And Crisp actually just saves Ziggs' life by restricting the amount of damage. Um, the, um, so yeah, so I I if you play Leona and your support jumps on your AD or your carry, what you do is you just jump on their carry and it means that they can't output damage anymore. If they can't output damage, then they struggle to really do anything. So we see Mako actually, again, with another hook into a flay absolutely perfect gameplay to be honest like he's playing this way better like way better like Mako has been a question mark in a lot of games but I like how he's playing this lane so far like he's playing it very well considering uh, in draft as well I mean he was his pick was taken early so you know So right now for the side of FPX, uh, they're, they're getting reset off. I mean, GP managed to get reset for a Sheen. Oh, 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 we're at 423. Let's go back to runes. Oh, wait, no, he, he just managed to get it. I thought he, oh, no, he didn't cheat. It's four minutes, sorry. I, I read it as three minutes for some reason, and I thought he cheated for a Sheen. Now, the, the the problem with this is, like, GP already gets so much pressure in lanes, right? Like, just take Futures Market. He's got Biscuits. You don't need Biscuits. Like, instead of taking those Biscuits, just take Futures Market. You get back earlier for Sheen. Yes, you have to be a little bit more controlled around your mana in laning phase, but it works out so much better. I mean... Overall, though, I mean, he just wants as much mana so he can kind of be as impressive as possible. I can see why he did it, but 
Doesn't mean I have to like it or think it's the preferred method, but. So here, so one of the big things that you do with GP as well is what you do. Oh, we actually see a fight in mid lane. Uh, Mako flashes in to get the flay. Galio does get the three man W off, um, which is huge. It means that Mako has to escape straight away. Scout does have a lantern there that he can use at any point. GG is still running him down, and he has a massive amount of attack speed and lifesteal, but his W is down, so he just backs out. Really, really good fight from the side of FPX. Doing very, really played that well there. Like I was saying, what you do is GP is you put a, a kind of a, a, a barrel here, and then the wave comes to here, and if they walk up, you just instantly put another barrel and chain it. And then you keep that barrel, you get the wave to here, you another barrel, and you kind of like work your way like this up until you're under their tower, just poking them out. And then at that point, you get vision down, and you're really, really safe. And you can still be very aggressive. But this was also before the GP changes, which now you can't really go grasp on GP anywhere near as much anyway. One of the advantages, this was a really nice tower dive, but you know, it, it was always going to go one way. And one of the big things when it does come to uh, grasp on GP, the reason why this worked is because your Q... Uh, oh, okay, really nice prediction on the hook there, so that he catch, uh, caught him, does manage to get the ignite down. Um, and Aphelios does kind of flash forward for it, but... The GP ult comes through, but it's not going to be enough. It does slow them by quite a lot, though it does buy them a lot of time. But again, it's really just not enough. The minefield, too. They're chasing him down. Oh, he gets a kill. The one for one. Mako, what a grief. Like, if he would have just left this here and not walked up there, then um, it would have been it would have been fine. It would have been a one for one. It would have been just way better. But he just really fucked it up there. Um, but yeah, so like I was saying, with GP, one of the reasons why Grasp used to work so much is because you could proc it on your Q, since your Q was classed as a melee attack. Now, they actually changed that on GP lately, so that his Q is actually now a ranged attack, so it doesn't um, proc Grasp. And, like, you just can't abuse it as much. But yeah, so, so this is the thing. So you have to have a basic on hit. So we see the replay here. Just really nice play from Mako. I mean, from uh, LWX, so it was very good that he actually managed to get out this far. Aphelios also burned his flash here. The GP ult was huge, and this one of the reasons why GP is just so... Uh, so nuts as a champion because like his ult um, can just help the opposite side of the map. Really good W from Ziggs there too. It's a bit of a shame that he used his Q wrong. He threw it the wrong way because he was trying to run. I mean, he was going to die anyway. I guess the guy was panicking. But either way, um, it's fine. So, I mean, right now, FPX are looking very, very good in this situation. I mean, even the kind of uh, cross map that we got on bot, well, not cross map, but um, the dive we got on bot really, really didn't go to plan. Now, EDG is also getting Herald here, which is a nine minute Herald, which means he's going to have plenty of time to put it around the map and actually do something with it. Um, he is probably just going to unlock one of the side lanes, though. If he can potentially relieve some of this pressure, I mean, both of his side lanes are getting hard pressured um, quite consistently now. The GP is still like a thousand gold up. Um, Lee Sin is about 600. Uh, the Silas is uh, 500 down. And the Ziggs is actually about, f about 400 up. Um, so, I mean, overall, right now, in terms of overall gold, SPX is actually in a really good position, but. Tian does manage to steal that blue buff away. The dragon is to the side of EDG though, so. And it's also an ocean and a mountain, so it's very, very risky actually going for it. The thing is here, uh, for, like for both teams, if it's infernal, then that's extremely good. And it will be very, very good if that infernal kind of pops on both. 
Now, if uh, it is uh, a cloud, then not so much. It's not going to do as much due to the fact that, you know, I mean, it will help Dimebee. I mean, it will help Ziggs if he uses ult. Like, and I mean, it, it will help them, but it's not going to be a win condition. If it's Infernal, then that's going to be a win condition because the, the amount of bonus stats you get out of Infernal Dragons is already pretty nuts. And then you add on top of that, the Infernal Soul buff is crazy strong. So, we will see where they go to from here. I mean, this bot tower is getting very low. Now, one of the things with Ziggs that's really important is his satchel will actually be able to destroy a tower from 25% HP. So if they manage to push another wave in here, they're going to potentially get this bottom tower first. Really good play by Tian. Now, one of the important things with that as well is um, that he did manage to land that Q, which is usually pretty easy when you ult, but we've seen situations where even players in LPL and LCK don't manage to land that Q after the ult, which... Is very risky. <laughs> so we do see Dimebee just kind of opened up by getting his W onto Scout, um, which he then managed to chain into his E. Tian with the um, RQ um, to kill Scout. Now the. Oh, I don't actually know what killed him. I mean, Domi did kill him, though. And so the kill did go, go over to him, which is pretty good because Domi is pretty big now. And, you know, it, all he really needs is those uh, Predator boots. And he's going to be zooming about the map like crazy. So we do see Olaf coming up. Flandre is going to be going on the Guri. He does ultimate way to get him back, but... They just can't contest that, especially when the don't be TP comes in. We see a GP ult come down, and GG does get chunked, but they're not going to be able to do anything. There's a fight on bot lane, but Tian is here, and they do just Thresh Lantern away. And this kind of one of the things, if you're trying to cross map, and you're against a Thresh, it's almost impossible to actually cross map. It's crazy. It becomes so difficult. So, so I mean, overall, I mean, we do see the mythics come out now. We have a gore drinker for both junglers, which gore drinker is broken. And um, we have a Trinity Force out of Gangplank, which is very good considering that amount of AD boost you get is huge. So important for a champion that relies on, you know, just one really big combo to win a fight. Um, in the bot lane, we see just boots come out. We do have Mobis off Thresh and on that. Now, the reason why you take Mobis on Thresh, even in a lane where you want to be hard aggressive, we do have a fight going on on top lane. Now, FPX do come in. The Dombi manages to get a great ultimate and manages to also taunt. They just get an easy um, 0 for 2 there. And they get that tower too, which is also very big considering that is first tower. So, a huge gold swing to the side of FPX. And this looks more like their game, to be honest. Uh, in game one and two, when they give Scout that rise, it was just over. But now he doesn't have that rise. They're looking much, much better now. Silas is a very, very big pick. Don't get me wrong. But Galu is a very big kind of like nullifying lane as well, which is really, really important. Now, as I was saying with Moby Boots, now some might look at these boots on Thresh and think, wow, what a troll. How could he? The reason you want to go Moby Boots in this lane, we will actually see the replay, actually. We'll, we'll carry this on in a minute. We see Lee Sin gets a nice Q into a Ward Hop kick. 
and then Dolly Mead just comes and cleans up the fight. So like I was saying, the reason why you want to go for these mobility boots, oh, this was actually a dive on Botling that went down though. Um, Thresh lanterns you feel us into and get in range, but it just takes way too many tower shots from the Ziggs. It's very, very difficult to kind of dive the Ziggs, especially in this situation. And again, another fight on top lane. Tian going nuts. I just want to explain the Moby boots, please. They get another kill. So, before they go nuts again, the reason why Moby boots are so good on Thresh is because Ziggs is very, very long range. So what you want to look to do with Thresh in this lane is you want to use the brushes as much as possible. And, I mean, you already count Leona. If she jumps on anybody, you flay her out. And, you know, that, that's a big counter for Leona. But what you also want to do is uh, get on top of the Ziggs however possible. Now, the only way you can really do this um, is to get Moby Boots and then run out of the bush with the Moby Boots active. Even if they cancel it, you still usually get in range to flay into the queue. Or you could just go for the Q at a much shorter range and hope they don't sidestep it. So this is why you still like those Moby Boots and it will help him to get back to the lane and rotate elsewhere. So even though it does seem troll, it is a very good buy. I am not usually one to defend Mako. I think he's a bit, a bit bad and I think he does hold this team back quite a bit in a lot of games. But it's very, very good. We do see the Zigzolt come out. I didn't even realize that was Zigzolt. That skin is broken. Like, the the circle is way harder to see in that skin, though. It might just be the fact I'm colorblind, but it just seemed way harder to see. So, at this point now, we're just kind of Wait and see what FPX do with this lead. They've got a very, very big gold lead. They can do a lot now. The problem that they're going to face is the fact that they are playing into a Silas, which can use their ults, which is going to be very, very big, considering, you know, Silas is going to have a massive amount of AP. Now, the fact he's got Everfrost as well means he gets AP from his Everfrost too, which is going to mean if he steals this Ziggs ultimate or the Galio ultimate, he's going to do a lot of damage with it. It's going to be a lot of damage. So... That's going to be one of their win conditions. Also, they do have an Aphelios who does have his Mythic and Serrated Dirk at this point. So, that Aphelios is going to potentially be doing a massive amount of damage now. So, we will be looking out for that. So, we do see them manage to push down mid. Uh, they just managed to reset uh, Negori's Demolition. No, they managed to get it off. Never mind. They used the GP ult just to try and get kind of space since they knew that as soon as that demolish was gone, they get it. The Herald play in bot. Nice. Okay. This could see also. Okay. This is looking much better for FPX. Uh, EDG are on the back foot massively. How do they bring this game back? That's what I want to know. How do they actually manage to turn this game from what it is now into a win? Because this is very, very... Um, I mean, they're very behind and... <laughs> It feels like junglers in LPL at, uh, on patch 11.15, if they don't get Lee Sin, they play like shit. If they get Lee Sin, they hard carry the game. <laughs> like, so, I mean, I have I was saying for a very long time that Lee Sin was in a very good position, especially since um, the camp time has changed. So what happens is, the camp timers were previously two minutes, which means if you're a farming jungler, you can farm your entire jungle, reset, and your top camp is already respawning, so that you can go and clear it away. Or your bot camp, whichever one you start first, your first camp. Now the problem with this is um, that they decided this is too strong, because you just farm like crazy, you wouldn't gank anywhere, and then you get two items and just one-shot everyone. Now the problem with this is that um, when they change the timers to two minutes 15, that now means that you have this big kind of 15 second window where you can't really do anything. It's not really much for you to do, you know? So because there's not really much for you to do, you end up in this kind of position where um, you have to gank. <laughs> now the, re the reason why this kind of bad is because champions that like to farm, Diana, Morgana at the time, like all of these champs, they don't really want to gank and they want to farm. 
So you get a kind of situation where if you're playing an aggressive jungler like Lee Sin, you can find them in their jungle and kill them as they're farming because their farm route will always be the same. It will always be, I clear everything, I reset. So we see an engage come here. Mako just completely popped out. FPX is looking to just push down this inhib. So they do feel like they're in a game ending situation and the Baron has just respawned as well. How did EDG pull this game back? This is a huge gold deficit. They're about 9,000 gold down on the side of FPX right now. Um, sorry, but I mean, compared to FPX. So Tian does kind of grief. He just jumps in on and off for no reason. Congratulations, Tian. You're dead. Like, okay, so that might be how they lose. Like, Tian is just griefing. Like, what is the point? Like, why would you do that? You've just taken an inhibitor, but now you need to wait for respawn instead of just using the supers to go and take Baron. That was such a grief play. Like, that was... It doesn't matter how much he's done in this game now. That was unbelievably bad. He's picked up a Black Cleaver, though. It's going to help with the Narthrash and the Olaf. But overall, like, it's... You just hate to see it, to be honest. So, we get a replay come in. Here we can see the Leona ult goes down. Ziggs ult on top. Mako is instantly dead. Now they look to just siege on the base. What they should have done here is just taken this in here and then just reset and gone into Baron. Or just gone straight into Baron. They have complete vision control of that area and they have pinks down. There's no con vision control inside of Baron right now. Again, this goes to, to show, like, FPS, they just... They just want to fight. So now they're going out to Baron, but they've already wasted so much time, and now they're 5v5. There's also a really, really smart ward outside that area. So the thing is, this bad vision control is coming down to the fact that the support just really isn't that good. So we have a really big fight. Olaf gets it. Olaf manages to steal the Baron. And this is why you can't take 50-50s against Olaf. Because his E, alongside his smite, means that he will always do more true damage than you. So if you try and force it against him and he has flash or he has a blast cone available, you're kind of screwed. So in those situations, the blast cone's over, I think. What, what happened? I do want to see the replay of it. I am going to go back. So, he doesn't blast go over. Wait, does Mako jump over and lantern him? He does. Okay. Mako, insane. That was actually huge. Okay, that was really, really good. He lanterns him in to then get him. So, there was a replay coming up. I'm just <laughs> impatient, I guess. Mako does die there, but I mean... It doesn't make up for the fact of how bad he's been playing permanently. Like, I mean, yeah, he's 0-4 now, but... Like, that one good play doesn't make up for the fact that FPX are pushing on his base because he's been playing bad. We also see the Horizon Focus come out for Ziggs right now. And we have 10 Dax, uh, Seal Stacks on the Galio as well, so... So now we're uh, we're just seeing them use this. Uh, oh, actually, I guess EDG did get the Baron, so this does actually allow them to stall. So that Baron, I mean, allows them to stall for long enough to win the game ultimately. So really, really bad play from the side of FPX. I can't believe they grief that hard though, to be honest. But we're just waiting to see what they decide to do from here because I mean they do still have an Aphelios and. They have popped this mid inhib. Now, the reason why this mid inhib is kind of bad because this Aphelios is just going to farm up like crazy. We can see he's got that pickaxe already. He's going to go for that Infinity Edge. As soon as he gets that, he's going to be doing so much damage in these fights. It's not even funny. So, he's also got Gale Force as well. This is really important because what he can do is to catch the Ziggs. When he gets Graviton, he can Gale Force into range to auto the Ziggs and then just root him instantly. This is going to allow everybody to jump on top of him. And it's also one of the reasons why. Aphelios is an amazing utility ADC as well, so we do see the Verdant Barrier come out for the Silas. Um, I mean, honestly, 
I, I mean, it is good here. They are double AP now. Like, typically, I wouldn't like to see that due to the fact that I don't feel like he's doing enough damage right now to warrant going defensive stats. But both of uh, their main carries are actually AP. Now, this GP is going to be doing a lot of damage, and he does get two really kind of cheap items in uh, Chemtech and um, Collector. So... He does get a lot of uh, Mythic Bonus from this Trinity Force right now, and he will be able to kind of take over team fights if he manages to get in a in a good position. But we'll see what happens from here. Viper and Mako just backing away right now. They don't want to take any risks um, whatsoever. I can see a hair on my nose. So I think it's from my head actually. So <laughs> no, it's not. It must be. I'm going crazy. I'm going insane. We do see the Magi's come out for Doinby. We love to see it. We love to see it. That nice 15 AP spike from Everfrost. Ooh, baby. We love it. So, they are just looking to see just based on now. The inhibitor has come back up now. So, they're not really going to be able to... Um, Siege as easy as they were before and now Baron Buff has gone for the side of EDG but they do still have an Aphelios. They are trying to push this tower out but it's very very hard for them to. They have quite a lot of uh, wave clear from the side of EDG if they do walk around as uh, multiple people. Anyway they are just trying to get this inhibitor but the Aphelios does have flamethrower. He's going to look to use his ultimate now. As soon as he can get into this fight. There we go. Graviton ultimate. Oh. We love to see it. We love to see it. The Gale Force into the Graviton ult. Oh, it's so good. I, no, I think it was Flamethrower ult, right? I think it was Gale Force into um, Graviton auto into Flamethrower ult. Very nice to see. He is huge this game. Viper is really, really going to pop off now. So here we see it. We can see Viper. He has Graviton and Flamethrower. Really, really great combination for fighting. Tian gets rooted here. Uh, does get an under auto off and then ults just to instantly kill him and then obviously Graviton comes down on everybody. He doesn't have his Q back so that he can't, you know, root them again. But he's already done everything he needs to in this fight. And Viper 1v9, like, Aphelios. I feel like uh, there was a certain stage in the game where people that don't really understand the game properly and don't understand what's good and what's bad were under the assumption that Aphelios was a bad pick. Now, Aphelios has been broken for the entire season because previously he had Death Dance, which allowed him to, you know, sustain massively and never really die. But then he got access to things like Gale Force and Shield Bow. So they are also items that stop him from dying, except you can build them first, whereas, you know, Death Dance, you get second or third. So... He's been this strong all season, but nobody really kind of caught on to it. Now, the problem is because Aphelios isn't really a solo queue pick, so it's not something you see often because you need so much coordination to make it work. But if you make it work in scrims and you can make it work in officials, it is such a powerful pick. It's one of the kind of go-to power picks, in my opinion, especially on top of, I mean, Gangplank as well. If you can get an Aphelios and a Gangplank on the same team, oh, it's going to be painful for the enemy team. It's going to be painful. Unfortunately, you can't really take Gangplank early because there is things that can counter him. So you have to wait until um, the second draft rotation or... Oh my god. Okay, so the instant blow up on Mako. It's unfortunate. Now it is a 4v5. But, I mean, Aphelios is still the main damage dealer. And he's red-white. Let's see if he'll fight. Like, he should do. I think they can win this potentially 4v5, to be honest. Uh, especially if Tian does that. The Galio ult comes through, so that's wasted too. We see a big Aphelios ultimate come in the back. And there we go. A nice now ult. This is a 4v5 fight, by the way. But there we go. He just pops off. And oh my god, the plays. What the? Holy shit. My god. Well, I just want to take a moment because that was insanely played. 
So as we can see here, he is on red white, so he has a massive amount of sustain out of his red guns. His white guns, he can still put down kind of things, but here the Galio ult is gone. So now what they're going to do, he managed to get a really big ult, and now he's got so many chakrams for him that he can literally just go crazy in this fight. Um, so here we can see that he just kind of instantly kills Naguri with his Gale Force, which is one of the reasons why it's so good. And then we just have Tian and Crisp. He flashes away from Tian and then just kills Crisp as well. That red gun came in so clutch, and the fact that he waited for his chakrams to be used until swapping to the red for that sustain was almost perfect. Now, Viper has been a player where, you know, it's been a little bit rough in some of the games that he has played, but this game is where it matters, and he's really showing up. Now, unfortunately, the Galio does have 18 stacks, so he is very, very big as well. So this is literally Viper versus Doinby. But man, this is one hell of a game. This is one hell of a game. So they are going to start juggling for the Baron again. Are they going to make the same mistake and try and go for Baron against an Olaf? I hope not, because if they do, that would be very, very silly in basically the game that decides if they win the Grand Finals or not. Obviously, unfortunately, spoilers, because we're, you know, like... <laughs> months behind in terms of well not months i think playoffs were like a month or so ago right so we are behind on the games but we're trying to catch up as much as possible but this is kind of these finals are the important games for us to watch because this is the kind of form that these players are in going into world so the final is super important and also we get to judge two teams in a row So they were in a 4v5 then. And it still managed to pop off. Viper, this game, is literally the the sole hope of EDG. I think they get something like a million dollars for winning. Something crazy. Let's find it. We're we're trying to we're trying to get it without uh I'm gonna find out how much they got without. Oh no, so it's 2 million um, yen. So we do see a fight going down right now. Crisp is getting chunked out massively before the fight even begins. Tian does uh, iron will to him just to kind of give him a bit of a shield. So, um, so the for winning this game, they got 227,884 pence. Roughly anyway, because it would have been based off uh, exchange rates at that time that's just what it currently is right now so i mean here we see another fight go down scouts uh banshees does get popped by the thresh hook but it would have gone through which would have been a huge situation now again we can see that ophelios is on red white once again are they really going to make the same mistake ophelios is you know still conditional but not as much because you know even when he has uh, other guns he's still useful unlike now when he's mini he's kind of pointless So here, okay, Naguri gets one shot by Viper, what the? Man, this guy is massive, he's so strong, and that's going to be barren for the side of EDG, due to the fact that Naguri walked into the back for a, such a bait ward. Okay, so they are going to slightly back away from it just because they don't really want to force this considering they've already got a kill on the Guri and they probably are sat on quite a lot of gold right now. So I would like to see their gold amounts, but they are going to try and stop them. The Ziggs ult does come in Tribush to try and stop the reset. Philius does manage to get back with the Nah. It's just a case of can Mako GG and Scout actually survive this. I think they can. Scout does have Galio ult as well, so he can get back very, very easily. They are going to look to go down towards this dragon. This is the Infernal Soul for the side of FPX. They really don't want to give this away, and it's probably one of the reasons why they didn't go for Baron here. So here you can actually see Aphelios with Sniper into um, Ultimate, and, you know, the Baron just does even more damage. Very, very strong. Good from the side of EDG. 
Now they can potentially just zone them out of this dragon and potentially take it for themselves. Scout does have Galio all at the ready, so if Olaf does just want to run in with his ultimate, he can. Okay, so we are going to go for another smite fight. Olaf gets it, obviously, he can smite from over 1k. Doinby does do a lot of damage, Scout does use his onions here, but Viper is just in the back doing so much damage. Is he going to be able to carry this fight? Probably not, Baron, uh, Baron is available for them. They are going to TP into mid and try and end. I don't think they can end when Aphelios is this big though, and he does manage to get his reset off. Scout isn't going to, but he should have just used his Galio ult then to get to the Olaf, but he's going to potentially try and kill here into the W. He manages to get a 1 for 1 and a massive amount of heal back from it. He's going to just continue chasing this fight down spx are trying to end the game in the base it's just not gonna happen though since viper is alive and he's so strong silas is also going to be able to kill a leona as well because w came off reset look how much hp he has now he had absolutely no hp before and now he's almost full crazy crazy game really sloppy macro from the side of fpx So when things get rough, their coordination really does just get thrown out of the window, which, I mean, it's unfortunate to see, but this game is, I mean, this is a game to go down in history books, like, from GG managing to steal the Baron into the Aphelios just getting huge, and the fact that they managed to delay them getting this Infernal Soul, they managed to get the Baron now, and this Baron is actually going to give them more than enough time now that they can actually just wait for this infernal soul three minutes the baron can help them push and you know relieve some of the pressure off the fact that they got this in here but the worst thing is this game like the fact that they got in here just really screwed them Here we see just a really really big fight i mean the silas does get caught but he does have his on and now in the back we just have viper going nuts with damage doesn't really matter too much since you know they did get the um dragon but viper is now full build as an aphelios this is a very scary situation and look at the amount of farm he has now obviously ziggs isn't going to farm as much as him and he does struggle farming into baron but one of the reasons behind this is the fact that Aphelios just got to farm this mid wave over and over and over while the supers were out. And he just ends up getting so big off it. So here we can see that they're going to continue pushing. He does have Sniper Graviton, which means he can get a pick from way, way away, potentially, um, if he manages to actually land his Q. But GP is trying to get some really nice triple barrels in there. It was, uh, he's just trying to get anything he can onto a Viper, and this is one of the reasons why GP is so hard, because these kind of triple barrel combos that you have to get that are really kind of obtuse um, are one of the main things that you're looking to try and do as much as possible. So, uh, I mean, Dobie does try and get on Scout, but not quite. GG does just take damage for absolutely no reason whatsoever, though. Like, what is he doing? Again, like, when he doesn't get Lee Sin, it's a really, really big problem. So against a lot of these teams, just ban Lee Sin, and you're in for a very, very good time. So, one thing we can see here is uh, Tian is just trying to go in on Mako again. Just instantly gets popped, and now the Galio will drop in there too. Aphelios is just going nuts, so he is in Red Gun. Can he survive here? No, he can't. He gets instantly popped. This could be an opportunity for FPX since they do have an inhib down, but Scout is going to be continuing pushing this. Can he actually stop this? He does have Baron buff minions, so he can just keep this cannon alive. He's just going to back away from it and reset. Unfortunately, the Aphelios died in there. That's the first death he's had of the game. He did alter his build, though. Let's see what he changed. So, he did have Collector. So, he did have a uh, Collector and a Mercurials. He sells the Mercurials. And he sells a Collector, which is really good, by the way. He sells a Collector, gets GA and Bloodthirster. I mean, nice, uh, I mean, adaptation with the build. I mean, he's full, like, gold, so... There's not really much else for him to do, but this is really good. This adaptation when he's full build is very important to see. So this flash was a little bit wasted, I think, but 
He just wanted to get some space from Tian, and now Galio comes down. The Leona ult does manage to clip him just a little bit, and Galio does manage to get on top of him. As soon as Galio is on top of him, GP manages to get a thousand gold, which would have mattered a lot more earlier into the game, but GP is already full build, so it really doesn't matter that much. Now, everybody at this point is full build. There's 25 stacks on Galio, though, since he hasn't died at all. So... That's very, very important due to the fact that he's getting so, so much gold out of just one item. I think it's nearly 3,000 gold just out of Medjai's when it's fully stacked. So, he's extremely powerful right now and he's technically stronger than, um, I mean, the Silas. I mean, the Silas does need to upgrade his Dark Seal into Medjai's now just so that he gets another Mythic bonus, to be honest. Um, or he needs to sell it, but I don't think he, selling it is the play here considering, you know, Doinby has so much free gold out of that. Daxial alone gives you like 1,000 free gold just from the stacks, so it's really, really important to uh, keep note of them. Now here we can see that the Infernal Soul goes over to the side of EDG. How are FPX going to actually play around this now? They are trying to get their pressure in mid. Viper is going to go and use a Blast Cone and get in a better position due to the fact that he can't really enter that fight at all. There's no Baron available. This is a 5v5 in the last minutes of the game. One good fight here, and this is completely over. This is one of the craziest games in a long time. And you just got to show you can never kind of count EDG out. So Doinby does manage to get caught a little bit there, but it's not really going to be too much. They do get chunked out quite heavily in this situation. They will be able to go and heal up a little bit, but I think both teams are just going to reset here. There's nothing on the map to play for, but EDG do have Infernal Souls, so they're instantly going to be stronger in these team fights now. And... KDA 9th. Naguri is not playing well. I mean, I think Naguri is so good, though, no? We watched some games from Naguri in, like, the quarters, and he played extremely well, but... I don't know. The stats say different, so maybe he had a bit of a rough season. Who knows? So, how do both teams win? Now, uh, EDG have a better scaling comp. Now, all they really need to do is protect his Ophelios, give him as much as he needs. He's on red-white, which means he does want to fight. So, that's kind of how they win right now in a straight 5v5. If he manages to dodge the GP barrels then, and the Galio ultimate, then he will just kind of win. We do see the Silas resetting. What is he going to build on this last item? He didn't build anything. He's just sticking with the Dark Seal. I think he's keeping these stacks because when you die with the Dark Seal, you lose less stacks. So maybe that's a reason why he's just holding on to it for the time being, considering he will be full build right now. Um, I, to be honest, I would have just built into Medjai straight away just for the, uh, the, the Mythic bonus. It's just an extra 15 AP on top as well. Very, very useful. Now, the reason why... I just go in here is because if you die this game is over so it doesn't really matter if you invest into a Medjai's because this game will be over we see Viper he actually went and started this Baron they are very very split right now Scout does kind of do a lot but he does have that GP ultimate it is gone now he uses flash to get away GP actual comes down Viper is in the back doing a lot, but he is on uh, blue-purple now, which if he does get a big ult... Oh, okay, so he gets a massive amount of damage on Naguri. He does ult, but it does go wide. Naguri flashes to get away from it, but now they can instantly go on Baron. He's going to shred it so goddamn fast. It's unreal. And at this point, cooldowns on ultimates really aren't that big, but this is one of the only opportunities that FPX are going to have to actually beat them. We do see the Ziggs ult come in. It doesn't really do that much. GG is just doing a massive amount. We see the TP coming from Naguri. He has full HP now, so now FPX do have a huge HP advantage in this fight. Mako gets almost blown up very, very easy. Lisa Q does go down on the Baron. They're going to keep it on 2k. And there we go. It gets smited away. Galio ult does come in as well. He has to instantly stopwatch. This is going to be good by your Medjai stacks, buddy. Because you are dead. That's the game for ETG. Holy shit. 
Dynamite was the only thing keeping him alive. Viper with a flash forward. He has red gun, so he really doesn't have to be worried. There's another fight going down over here, but it's just really too late. Scout has his W heals for a massive amount. No grievous wounds on him there. Nat is already bought with a TP coming in from Scout, and they are just going to end the game. Holy shit, man. This was something else. Like, this was one hell of a game. How EDG won this is beyond me. Like, holy shit. If EDG are down, you do not want to... You do not want to rule them out. We will just see what they did for this kind of end of the game. Like, man, congratulations. Jesus. That's a fat 40,000 in each player's pocket. Well, not really, because the all will take a lot, but that's such a huge amount. So we are going to leave that there. We're going to stop the recording. This was an amazing series, though. Holy, but yep, we'll end it now.